tuberculosis medications is the topic. And tuberculosis, or TB, is essentially a lung infection with a uh, bacteria known as mycobacterium tuberculosis. And because it's a lung infection, you have some of the very classic uh, symptoms as cough and hemoptysis, coughing up blood uh, is also uh, involved, which is, of course, very serious. Weight loss can occur with TB, night sweats, and fever, of course. Now, what I wanted to do in this uh, uh, topic uh, presentation is really talk about the first-line medications and really sort of focus on what are the things that are tested on the licensing exams. And what they really test on the licensing exams are the side effects, interestingly. So let's start off with the first medication, which is a very famous one known as isoniazid. And they give three-letter abbreviations for each drug. Now this drug is the most useful for TB. It's bactericidal, which essentially means that it kills the bacteria. Now, it was not created to be an acronym. Isoniazide is abbreviated INH for some reason. But you can think of it as an acronym with regard to its side effects. INH meaning injures neurons and hepatocytes. And that's a really nice way of just remembering what kind of problems it causes. So first let's talk about the neurons. What we're really talking about is a condition that can result as a, as a consequence of using isoniazid known as peripheral neuropathy. And what that involves is feelings of numbness, of tingling, and also a condition known as hyperesthesia. Hyperesthesia essentially means that you have increased sensitivity to stimulation. And this is due to use of INH. And what happens is this medication can cause a deficiency of vitamin B6. And that is what the person is experiencing these symptoms. So how do you prevent this from happening? Is that along with the isoniazid medication, you give the person vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 also is known as pyridoxine. And you give about 25 to 50 milligrams per day of this vitamin B6 along with isoniazide to prevent the peripheral neuropathy. The next part is that isoniazide can injure the hepatocyte. So what are we talking about there? We're talking about hepatitis. And that can be monitored by measuring the liver enzymes, of course, ALT, AST levels will be elevated. And this is particularly worrisome in alcoholic patients because their liver is already most likely damaged. The next medication I wanted to discuss is rifampin. And rifampin is also a, a bactericidal uh, medication that's used in uh, tuberculosis treatment. But its side effect is that it causes, in addition to isoniazid, this also causes hepatotoxicity, but not as much as isoniazid. But the key uh, symptom uh, that they test on the licensing exam in terms of side effects is that it turns the body secretions into a specific color, and that is orange. So you tell the patient this so that the patient doesn't get alarmed or um, you know, discontinue treatment. It's pretty benign, but it's important to tell the patient that to avoid the patient from getting unnecessarily worried. Next medication is pyrazinamide. And pyrazinamide is usually used less than six months. And really the main thing that you need to be concerned with is that it also can cause liver damage. 
especially if it's combined with another medication such as rifampin. Because tuberculosis medications are often given in combination, they're not given individually. And finally, the fourth one that I want to discuss is ethambutol. And ethambutol is very commonly tested with regard to the following side effect, and that is it causes optic neuritis. And what that essentially does is causes an inability to distinguish between colors. And in particular, what we're calling, what we're talking about is the inability to distinguish between blue from green. And that is, of course, followed by impairment of visual acuity. So keep that in mind. That'll be on the licensing exams as well. So let's take a look at a few vignettes and see what this looks like. 15-year-old boy is brought to your office by his parents because of numbness and tingling in his feet, slowly increasing over the last several weeks. He has ADHD, for which he is taking methylphenidate. In addition, he had a positive PPD skin test after screening upon entrance to high school and was placed on isoniazid for six months. He takes no other meds, has no allergies. Parents feel that he has become more difficult to control since entering high school and father confides to you that he suspects these latest complaints are a method of avoiding physical education class. He answers your questions readily and reports that gym is actually his favorite class at school. He denies any problems with friends. Uh, on physical exam, you find nothing abnormal except hyperesthesia over a stocking distribution of both lower extremities. DTRs, motor function, and sensation are intact. Patient's current condition would have likely been prevented by supplementation with. Well, he had isoniazid treatment, and now he's developed peripheral neuropathy. And the reason is isoniazid can induce a vitamin B6 deficiency. So if you gave the vitamin B6, it would have prevented this. And vitamin B6 is, is also known as pyridoxin. And next question, 14-year-old girl, recent immigrant from Southeast Asia, is diagnosed with uncomplicated pulmonary TB. She is placed on a three-drug regimen with two of the drugs administered daily and one of the agents administered twice weekly. Because of this drug therapy, the patient is also given pyridoxine on a daily basis, and she must undergo periodic tests of ocular function. During her drug treatment, a red-orange coloration of sweat and lacrimal secretions is noticed. Results of her liver function tests are normal. Patient is likely uh, taking which of the following three drugs? Well, this is a great question. Let's figure this out. Well, she's been given pyridoxine, so she's on INH because INH causes uh, vitamin B6 deficiency, and pyridoxine is just another name for vitamin B6. Then she has to undergo these eye tests. Why? Because she's on ethambutol, because ethambutol can cause optic neuritis, which is an inability to distinguish between blue from green, and it also uh, results in impairment of visual acuity. And finally, she's got this orange color of her sweat and lacrimal secretions, her tears, and that is classic for rifampin. So the answer to this question would be, let's see which one, uh, right here, B, ethambutol, isoniazid, rifampin. And finally, 36-year-old man who is a recent immigrant from a country with high prevalence of TB has a positive result on a TST test performed as part of a job physical. He has no symptoms of TB and feels well. Uh, HIV testing is negative and chest radiograph is normal. He drinks about six beers a day. Each of the following treatment regimens for latent TB in this patient is appropriate except. Well, the key thing with this is that they're really talking about hepatitis or hepatotoxicity and all these drugs have that as a side effect but one thing that immediately stands out for me is choice E because it's a double combination two medications and for 12 months uh, that is probably the one that could cause hepatitis uh, the most uh, highest risk of developing hepatotoxicity so that would probably be the least appropriate so choice E